hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Declaration of Independence was created by our founding fathers and is the basis on which they built all the rest of our nation. It is the core principle to our United States and is the key to our freedom. The Obama presidency implemented many LGBT protections and policies. Since President Trump has taken over, he has widely repealed many of these protections and policies. This has hurt everyone, not just the LGBT community. This is an infringement on the unalienable right to life. So, what's happening? How is it happening? Why should you care? I'm going to go over all of that for you and how it's going to affect us. So, what's happening? The Obama-era regulations for LGBT workers and patients have been widely halted and or rolled back by the Trump administration. For example, last year, they froze Medicare and Medicaid LGBT-friendly rules from the Obama administration that were still making their way through the system. They have also removed LGBT-friendly language from all existing policies and procedures. They have also removed the LGBT advisor to the Department of Health and Human Services, or HHS. The HHS is the department within the government that oversees health care to all groups, including the LGBT community. But this also includes women, minority groups, men, all genders, all nationalities. Everyone that resides within the United States and needs health care, they are overseen by this department. <clears throat> Elliot Kennedy was the previous LGBT advisor for the HHS. He has since been reassigned to the Rockville, Maryland for disease prevention. He has not been replaced. Currently, the HHS does not have an advisor for LGBT, despite the fact that their department oversees and ensures that all communities are able to have health care. Now, how is this possible? How can we have widespread government removal of LGBT policies and have widespread anti-LGBT sentiment in place. Well, the first step to this is to place people on high levels who share the belief that LGBT community does not need representation and or is anti-LGBT themselves. An example of this is Roger Saravino. He is the current leader of the HHS. Ten months ago, he stated, same-sex marriage was merely the start to the left's LGBT agenda. The radical left is using government power to coerce everyone, including children, into pledging allegiance to a new gender ideology over and above religious freedom. He has also said that the Supreme Court's ruling on same-sex marriage is wrong. He said that one month after the ruling. This is troubling. As the leader of the HHS, he widely influences those below him and hires those below him. If he holds anti-LGBT sentiment, a community he is supposed to protect, then he will hire people who share his sentiment. sentiment. <clears throat> and this could lead to widespread department and government discrimination against this community. And it's not just the HHS. The current Attorney General, William Barr, has argued in front of the Supreme Court that the Civil Rights Act does not protect against homosexuality or transgender individuals, and that to extend those protections to those communities is a violation of the Civil Rights Act. Essentially, his argument is that to extend protection to the transgender and or LGBT communities based on the Civil Rights Act is actually a violation of the law and should not take place. This is concerning because if a member of the LGBT or transgender community has a concern and feels that they need to seek legal recompense, they may not be supported by the legal system at large and or attorney bar because of the belief that the Civil Rights Act does not apply to their community. Another concern 
concerning widespread government anti-LGBT sentiment is that the Department of Education recently released a statement that they will no longer investigate transgender students' complaints about not being able to use the correct restroom. This sounds like a very minor thing. However, transgender LGBT youths in general have had many studies done that indicate that not being supported by their parents, peers, and leaders can lead to depression, self-harm, and su higher suicide rates within those communities. I would argue that the loss of any life, but especially the life of a child, should be avoided at any cost. I believe that allowing someone to use the bathroom of their choice is a minor price to pay to save the life of a child. Not everyone agrees with that, but that is my belief. Another example of a high-level individual who ha has anti-LGBT sentiment is Ch Charmaine Yos. She is the public affairs chief advisor for the HHS. For years, she has advocated against LGBT issues. She has said that same-sex couples shouldn't be allowed to adopt children and that transgender individuals suffer from mental disorders. Now, these statements were made several years ago. However, in regards to the article that I read, she was reached out to and declined to comment about her current position on LGBT rights. I believe that this is a statement in and of itself. If, your position ha if her position had not changed, then she had changed, she would have reached out and corrected her previous statements. The fact that she did not feel the need to reach out and correct her previous statements to me implies that her opinion has not changed. Matthew Bowman is the HHS Deputy General Counsel. He has said that you should vote LGBT if you want to be forced to have your baby delivered at an abortion clinic. That was tweeted in April. Honestly, I'm not sure where he gets that from. I'm not sure how voting for LGBT rights also equates to abortion clinics and then also equals abortion clinics giving birth to babies. Typically, abortion clinics don't give birth to babies. That's kind of the whole point. And LGBT generally doesn't mean you're going to be getting pregnant. Like, I'm not sure how he's coming up with that, but it's clearly very anti-LGBT either way. All of my content for this speech was pulled from an article by Dan Diamond from Politico.com. Uh, it's entitled, Trump Administration Dismantles LGBT-Friendly Policies. Now, Dan reached out to the HHS regarding all of the individuals that I've just discussed, um, he dis he reached out to them about the chairman, about the departments, and the HHS responded with a pre-written statement. They said, all the HHS staff you refer to in your story have sworn to uphold the law and believe that everyone deserves to be treated with respect because of their inherent human dignity. The belief that marriage is between one man and one woman is a mainstream view held by millions of Americans, a belief the Supreme Court has said is based on decent and honorable premises. That, that statement concerns me uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, the belief that marriage is between one man and one woman is a mainstream view, as stated in that statement, indicates that the HHS as a whole is supporting that viewpoint. To include it in the statement means that they support that, <clears throat> that belief. That concerns me because as a general rule, the Supreme Court has upheld that same-sex marriage is legal and should be able to take place. But this statement by the HHS appears to imply that the Supreme Court also feels that marriage is between one man and one woman and no one else. I get concerned any time that a government agency of any type shows preference to one side or the other of a issue like this. It implies that discrimination is want to take place. Um, I also have an issue with the part of the statement that says that the individuals in the story have sworn to uphold the law and believe that everyone 
deserves to be treated with respect. Now, if they truly believe that the LGBT community and the trans community do not qualify for equivalent levels of respect, then that kind of negates the part about being treated with respect. Now, in regards to the part of the statement that says they have sworn to uphold the law, as I previously said, Attorney Barr has argued that the Civil Rights Act and or other civil protections against discrimination do not apply to homosexuality and the transgender community. Therefore, if you believe what Attorney Barr says, you don't necessarily have to uphold non-discrimination policies against homosexual and or transgender people because, according to Attorney Barr, you are not breaking the law. Therefore, if legality is the only thing keeping you from discrimination, that gives you a loophole, and that definitely concerns me. Another thing that has happened that shows the widespread discrimination is the removal of LGBT questions or data from questionnaires for Medicaid and Medicare. <clears throat> They were added by the Obama administration in hopes of collecting information on diseases prevalent to the LGBT community and allow for further testing as to whether or not specific diseases occur more often in the LGBT community. It was also hopeful to test mental health concerns within the LGBT and trans community, as well as collecting data on preferred pronouns and gender identity. These were all important data points for improving the treatment of the patients within these communities and the improvement of just patient care in general. The more information that you have, the better you can treat your patients. And finally, uh, the last thing that's been implemented that allows for these widespread removals of LGBT positive regulations is the creation of a new division within the HHS called the RLDW, also known as the Religious Liberty Division for Workers. The purpose of this department is to protect healthcare workers who refuse to provide care for members of the LGBT community. It is headed by Shannon Royce. She is the liaison with religious groups as well. Uh, she has removed Excuse me. She has spearheaded the removal of LGBT language and protections from documents and questions. She has widely been known to have anti-LGBT community sentiments. Now, the concern that I have regarding the Religious Liberty Division for Workers is that the healthcare community at large is based off the statement first do no harm. I would argue that not providing care definitely has the ability to do harm. Do, doing harm is such a broad sentiment. You could do harm by stabbing someone. You could do harm by not doing something for someone. For example, if you refuse to care for a member of this community who has a heart attack because of religious beliefs, that person could die. There are also smaller harms that could be done. You could allow the person to have increasing pain. You could have the person have difficulty breathing. The worst outcome is death, but there are smaller, just as concerning outcomes for harm that I believe should not be present within healthcare. I believe that to go into healthcare is to set aside any bias that you might have and to treat everyone who walks through your door, regardless of gender, sexual identity, community, minority group, sex, whatever it may be, uh, people of color, African American community, any group, you treat them because your policy is first do no harm and not acting can do just as much harm as hurting someone. Now, why is this important? Why does this need to be spoken about. Why Why should you care, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Me personally, I'm a member of the LGBT community. I identify as lesbian. This concerns me greatly. As a member of the LGBT community, this 
repeal of policies means that I could be kicked out of my apartment and have no way to go and fight it legally. I could be fired from my job and it would be completely illegal. It, I could go to the doctor's office and they could refuse to treat me or my child because of my gender identity and there is nothing that I could do about it. That concerns me. I feel that that is an important human right. The ability to provide for yourself and your family is a right that is discussed in the Declaration of Independence and is important. However, not everyone agrees with me, clearly. Not everyone is a member of the LGBT community. Not everyone has a friend or a family member or anyone that they know that's a member of the LGBT community. And there are, clearly, uh, people who believe that existing as a trans or LGBT person is evil, inherently, religious or otherwise motivated. Despite that, if you are of that belief or of the belief that this doesn't affect me directly, I don't really care, I would argue that it does. I would argue that you should still be concerned and you should still want to reach out because any infringement on the basic rights of an individual within our nation is a slippery slope. The, f the first step to losing our freedom, the first step to losing all that we hold dear is allowing small injustices on those that are, quote, marginalized. Now, the, I don't believe the LGBT community is marginalized. I believe that we have many, many resources. We have many supports from the community. We have many, many things, and we are not thrown in jail. We are not, we are not actively discriminated against by the wider community in general. However, I would argue that discrimination against the ability to have health care, the ability to be healthy, is discrimination and discrimination of any minority group leads to discrimination of others. It has been shown by multiple studies of fascist and or auto autocratic governments that the way these governments are created from democratic societies begins with small removal of rights of communities that the wider population does not believe need those rights. For example, the beginning, excuse me, of the Nazi regime in Germany pre-World War II was begun by just small little changes like most people believe, this is, actually goes back to the LGBT community as well, most people believed that gay men were evil and were going to hell. And the first, one of the first things implemented was that it's illegal to be gay or that it's not okay to practice your religion freely. People were not, people already didn't like these minority groups. So to them, it's just implementing what everybody feels anyway. What's the harm? And as things progress, it's very, very small increments. You don't even notice. It's like boiling a frog. You put the frog in the cold water, gradually the water heats up. He doesn't even realize he's going being boiled till he's dead. Same thing can happen. Gradual desensitization. You don't even notice that your rights are being taken away till they're gone. That being said, it's not necessarily that you need to care about us as a community. We believe, and I believe, and I find morally you should believe that we are important and we deserve all the rights of everyone else. But if that's not your belief, I would still argue you should be concerned because small removals of rights for many minority groups can equal very negative consequences. In summary, what, what's happening? The LGBT regulations, language, policies, procedures, all of the LGBT protections essentially are being repealed by the wider government and especially the healthcare system. Um, there's no LGBT senior advisor to the HHS and there's been a, a wide appointment of anti-LGBT people in high level positions including the education department, HHS, and the attorney general's office. 
There's no longer being data collected for long-term studies on the LGBT community, and there's now a division of the HHS specifically for people who refuse to treat LGBT me community members. <clears throat> Why is this important to you? Because life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are central to our government, or, or excuse me, our nation. This infringement on any life, liberty, or pursuit of happiness can lead to very significant negative outcomes. Discrimination is a breach of rights. It is morally reprehensible. If that's not enough for you, discrimination, it can lead to widespread government takeover. I, we live in a republic. We have the ability to change things. We elect our leaders. We can reach out. We can tell them that we do not approve of their actions. We have the ability to make change. Let's do that. Let's change these negative anti-LGBT, LGBT feelings. Like let's, let's come together as a community and make change. You can reach out to your congressman, tell him how you feel, let him know you're not okay with the government discriminating against anyone, including the LGBT and trans communities. Tell your congressman that you want everyone's rights supported, not just your own. Reach out to the HHS, tell them that their actions are unacceptable. You can reach the HHS at hhs.gov or at 877-696-6775. Speak out, say something, do something. The, the saying is, if you see something, say something. Well, you can't see it, but you now know about it. You have an obligation as a member of this community of this great nation to uphold the core principles that make our nation so great. Uphold the rights of everyone, not just the people that are deemed important. Speak out. Edmund Burke once said, the only thing necessary for, triumph, for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. See something, say something.